The boy on your screen is just 17 years old, but he is taking on the world number one Magnus Carlsen at the Qatar Masters 2023 round 4. Pranesh is his name and he's playing with the white pieces. Now Magnus lost the second game of the Qatar Masters against Alisher Sulemoinov and then he won his third round game. So this is the fourth round. Magnus needs to keep scoring points if he wants to win this tournament and he would be going all out against his opponent. He's adjusting all his pieces. Pranesh is known for his tactical play, for his intuitive play and he's very sharp. So let's see how he fares against Magnus. The game begins. Pranesh with the white pieces opens with 1 e4 and Magnus now has to decide what will he do. Will he go into hardcore theory? Well, doesn't seem likely. He goes for the modern defense g6 and generally People choose the modern when they want to get into unconventional positions which are not dictated by opening theory. Uh, and that's what Magnus does. He plays d6. Pranesh brings his knight out to c3. And Magnus now plays c6. So you can see he's playing three pawn moves, trying to confuse his opponent. But Pranesh is not at all getting confused. He's just blitzing out his moves. He plays bishop e3 and tells Magnus that I'm not really worried about your opening and gets off from the board. So there's no one at the board <laughs> in the first, after first four moves of the game. Magnus comes back and now plays his knight out to f6. So some kind of a move order that Magnus has chosen. There could be ideas of knight g4 hitting the bishop. So Pranesh has to decide on what way he wants to continue. Well, he simply goes f3 and stops that knight from jumping to g4. It's a nice little move. So now it's also a very aggressive setup because generally you want to put your queen on d2, long castle, g4, h4, h5, just like the Sicilian dragon is how you want to continue. What is Magnus going to play now? He goes b5 and you will see that Magnus does not develop his bishop to g7 instantly because he knows that queen d2 bishop at 6 can happen at some point and he doesn't want to lose that tempo. Woo, h5. Magnus is actually going for this sort of light squared strategy because if you see his pawns, they are all on light squares right now. And that's how he's playing this he brings his knight to d7 so while pranesh has kind of started developing all his pieces two pieces out and so on magnus hardly has got any pieces out he's just playing with pawns but look at pranesh he plays f4 he wants to maybe break with f5 that could be his idea he's going very aggressive and that's how he likes to play you know pranesh is an aggressive player also with the pawn moving up to f4 He's freed the square f3 for his knight. The knight could move out here. And so Magnus now taking his time. He needs to decide what to do. One idea is b4. The other one is to go knight b6. And that is a very interesting move because you keep an eye on the c4 pawn. He plays it. Knight b6 keeps an eye on the c4 square. And also later on opening up the bishop. And there's also another idea which should be very, very interesting. And that is, by the way, knight f3 played. And that is to play d5. Ooh, he first goes b4, which is logical. And now the knight is attacked. So one, one way is to go back to d1, but it's slightly passive. Instead, we could go knight e2. Yeah, knight comes to e2. And now the knight can jump to c4 attacking the bishop. But he goes d5. And this actually now clarifies Magnus's opening strategy completely. Because he's playing for the light squares. e5 played by Pranesh. And you will see that Magnus has made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pawn moves out of 10. And now goes bishop g4 hitting the knight. 
the knight has to be defended so the most logical move now is to play bishop g2 and that's what he does he plays his bishop to g2 and black would want now to eventually go e6 and c5 he plays his pawn up to e6 so very solid structure you can see that black has such a solid structure and also the ability <laughs> to break with c5 this is a fantastic position for magnus carlsen here and he will most likely get an opening advantage also his bishop now can be simply given up for the knight bishop takes f3 bishop takes f3 so while black has a very active plan with c5 coming up not exactly now but with knight d7 and c5 what is white's breaking plan like what is the pawn break that white is looking for it's not so clear at all in fact white has to play for f5 breakthrough at some point which is impossible because there are two pawns but maybe it's a pawn sacrifice that has to be looked into so knight d7 played by magnus and humanly this position looks really very very comfortable for black he goes h4 just saving his pawns connecting them all together bishop e7 played by magnus in fact here rook c8 oops rook c8 or c5 or knight c4 was maybe also possible now he goes short castle so pranesh puts his king on g1 it looks little loose there because of so much space around it but also it's not very easy to get to the king rook c8 played by magnus now so magnus taking it easy for the c5 break not rushing into it and pranesh goes c3 he connects his pawns but on the other hand the c4 square is going to get really weakened yes c knight c4 played here the bishop has to move away bishop c1 played and somewhere you might ask yourself that white seems to be completely in trouble here this has no moves but as is rightly pointed out by very strong players that f5 is a very legitimate idea in such positions it's not just a pawn sacrifice but it breaks apart black structure for the time being magnus has taken on c3 and pranesh takes back now you can see the knight is very well positioned on c4 it's a complete outpost the knight cannot be kicked away by any of the pawns there and one of the reasons why magnus is not willing to go c5 because let's say if you go c5 here is because then f5 becomes really strong idea in such positions so that's the reason why he plays the move rook b8 now king h1 played by pranesh and magnus plays his queen to a5 attacking the c3 pawn here keeping an eye on it and pranesh goes queen d3 white is kind of waiting for the time for the right time for f5 break and magnus goes bishop a3 because he wants the control of the b2 square now bishop e3 is not a good move because black can go bishop b2 can also go rook b2 or can also go knight b2 all pieces going to b2 is a good idea but magnus takes on e3 and that is not a great idea because now magnus has given white a great opportunity well it might seem on one hand that after queen takes e3 you can bring another knight here which is exactly what magnus does but pranesh has some ideas now one of them is that he can go rook b1 and keep this knight pinned and uh, it's such positions where pranesh becomes very difficult to face he plays rook b1 he has 51 minutes on the clock magnus has 59 minutes so magnus plays his king to d7 he connects his rooks and is angling now to go knight to c4 that is his plan but pranesh pushes his pawn to f5 whoa what a break here if g takes f5 he might want to go knight f4 and start attacking this pawn 
But if E takes F5 is what Magnus plays, this is again a very risky move because now you don't have the H5 weakness here. But E6 becomes possible and Pranesh gives another pawn. He is on an aggressive streak playing against the strongest player on the planet. That requires some guts. F takes E6 and where is Pranesh's compensation? He's two pawns down. How is he going to recover his material is the question. Well, the knight will jump to F4 and that seems the most logical move. He has played knight F4 attacking E6 and G6 pawns and Magnus brings his rook to E8 defending the pawn on e6 now if you were to play knight takes g6 immediately then the black knight would settle in on c4 and so pranesh here takes his time and again finds the best move a prophylactic move stopping knight c4 magnus goes bishop d6 attacking the knight and clearly wants to take it off uh, but pranesh does not allow it he takes the pawn on g6 Magnus plays his knight to c4. He has 41 minutes. Pranesh also has 41 minutes here. And I think it's a good time for the knight to be kicked off. By the bishop, you can just take it off. Yeah, he takes on c4. And now after d takes c4, Magnus has got a good square for his queen on d5. If you count the number of pawns for the time being, white has 5 pawns. Black has 6, but after knight e5 check, you can see that the g pawn is a protected passer. It's a very strong pawn. And uh, yeah, white has good compensation. If you take bishop e5, d5, the pawn would be well positioned here. And the rook could enter there. So Magnus plays king c6. But now Pranesh again has a strong idea here at his disposal. It's not an easy position to play. But I think he should be able to find it. He goes knight f7. Fine move there. Fantastic. He wants to take on d6. Also the e6 pawn is weak. And I believe this move is not something that Magnus was expecting. He gives a check after 20 minutes of thought. That's a long, long thing. And he gives a check here. Pranesh has to move his king. It feels after queen d5 check. He brings his king to the side. And now this knight is so trickily placed because it can take the bishop. Also at the same time, no one really can attack that knight so easily. Magnus plays f4. And this is not particularly a great idea, but okay, it's a playable move. Queen f2 played. And now rook takes rook. Seems okay. Rook takes rook. And you push your pawn to f3. Yeah, he takes the rook. Pranesh can recapture back. Yes. And now black can push his pawn to f3. That seems like a good move that keeps the balance in the position. What should white do after f3 is the question. But will Magnus play f3? He's down to 15 minutes. No, he goes rook f8. And that is a mistake. Because if you have to take the bishop, king takes d6 is fine. But there is a very powerful intermezzo here. Pranesh, who has 35 minutes on the clock, thinks and plays queen b2 instantly without much thought. Because if you take here, there's queen b7 check. It could be a move that Magnus has missed. No, he goes c5, defending here the queen. And now the knight takes the bishop. King takes on d6. But the king is looking exposed. Not at all a good position, a good sign. Queen a3, love the move. Attacking the c5 pawn. The best move now for black is rook a8. But it's very, very complicated to find such a move. Magnus goes queen f5 and this is a mistake. Now, this is technically a winning position for Pranesh. But it's so tough. First, you have to give a check. He makes the first move correctly. King d5 is forced because if you go backwards... The rook will move in with a check and it's devastation. So king d5 played by Magnus Carlsen. And now Pranesh, where does he go and give a check? You can see Hikaru there on the far side trying to look at what's happening in the game. 
and Pranesh has got Magnus's king on the run. He gives a check. Fantastic move. King has to move back. If only the rook could enter here, it was game over. But it's not so simple to get that square. How do you coordinate your pieces? He takes the pawn on c5. D takes on c5. You can see Pranesh getting excited because if king takes, then there's rook b5 check and you lose the queen. He takes on c5 with the queen. Now important is that you don't go to these squares because of queen d5 check and you trade queen. So he goes king f1, which is the correct idea once again. Now there are no checks in the position and Magnus only move is queen d5. He plays it to stop rook d1 check and if the queens are traded, then black has absolutely no problem. So queen b4, this is not the best move. The right idea was queen a6 and then followed by taking the pawn on a7 because king e5 that is rook b5. But instead he goes queen b4 and Magnus goes king e5. But now isn't the rook hanging there on f8? Has Magnus blundered? You can see Pranesh looking a little surprised, a little shocked. He goes rook e1 check, king f5 played. And this is actually shocking because Magnus is giving up the rook with a check. I'm sure that Magnus saw all of this. King goes to g4. And now the plan is king is coming into g3. Queen d3 check. Queen here. It's very powerful. He goes rook e2 which seems the logical move. But black is now maybe even pushing a bit because f3 you can't move the rook. If you go with the rook anywhere... Queen d1 check is a big problem to face. So Pranesh finds this excellent defensive move, queen f6, which is very commendable because after sort of feeling that you are better to find a move like queen f6, which helps you to hold the game is not at all easy. F takes on e2, check. Now the king has to take back the pawn. Yes, he takes king e2 and offers a draw to Magnus Carlsen there. And Magnus will he accept the draw because the g pawn is extremely powerful. Well, he does not. He gives a check. Magnus still wants to win. It's not going to be easy. King to f2 played. And now Magnus pushes his pawn. But this pawn is way too slow. The fastest pawn is the G pawn, which is just three squares away from becoming a queen. And so Pranesh taking a final think in the position. He goes G6 and he knows that Magnus cannot conjure up counterplay in these few moves that are there. Two more moves for his pawn to queen. So queen C2 check played. The king has to move away. Where exactly do you move it? He goes king g1. And now you have to give a check from the last rank. Magnus gives queen b1 check. And Pranesh now has to move his king. He goes king g2. And it seems like the repetition is incoming because white does not want to, uh, you know, his pawn is very much advanced. Meanwhile, black has the activity with his queen and king, but it is not enough to win the game. Queen e4 check played and now Pranesh plays king f2 and I think it's time for the players to agree to a draw. Magnus now offers a draw. And with this, 17-year-old Pranesh holds Magnus to a draw in a very exciting encounter. A huge congratulations to him.